this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog. Now this time we're going to be looking into the 10th episode of Season 3 of The Muppet Show, which features Marisa Berenson. Now for those of you who are not familiar with Marisa Berenson, she is actually known to be both an actress and a model, appearing in covers of many different magazines including Time and Vogue. But as an actress, she has been very recognizable, appearing in many different films including Death of Venice, uh, Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon, SOB, I Am Love, and her standout role that got her a lot of uh, a lot of awards was actually Natalie Landau in the film of Cabaret, in which she actually won a Golden Globe and a BAFTA award. And with all that said, going into the episode that she actually appeared in, it was actually quite interesting because it's been a while since we've actually seen an episode like this, but this is the kind that, uh, there we go, sorry I just wanted to adjust my hat, but anyways, uh, this is the kind of episode that it's more prominent in terms of its backstory and like, uh, like what's pretty much been going on backstage and what they're planning more so than the special guest star or the individual sketches that happen on stage. Basically what happens during this story is that Miss Piggy is pretty much trying to plan this wedding sketch where it's kind of like this scheme for Miss Piggy to go ultimately marry Kermit the Frog. Like, she like she wants to do an actual wedding where Kermit would be K uh, Miss Piggy's forever, but like she would disguise it as this comedy sketch. And throughout the whole time, it's all this preparation. Meanwhile, at the same time, Kermit is trying to negotiate with... Uh, someone who wants to perform on the show, this is a new guy. In fact, this is actually the first appearance of New Zealand and his boomerang fish act. And, um, like, Kermit tries to say no, but, like, he always keeps coming back. Like, like he always wants to make sure that he wants to get a spot on the show. But, um, yeah, ultimately, I would have to say that this is definitely the best part of the entire episode where basically you got Miss Piggy trying to do this ultimate plot while Kermit is trying to handle both, trying to figure out what Miss Piggy is trying to do while simultaneously trying to handle Lou Zealand at the same time. And it, and it definitely is a lot of fun seeing the entire preparation to know what Miss Piggy is trying to do with this entire sketch, um, ultimately to try to fall in love with Kermit all over again. It's definitely a lot of fun, and the result of many of these moments are absolutely hilarious they're just a lot of fun and especially I think this is the kind of episode where Miss Piggy is definitely the most prominent in this where we do see a lot of her mindset and a lot of the scheming that she tries to do where ultimately she would end up being foiled because like Kermit would always be one step ahead of her and uh, the outcome of the entire thing of like everything they try to set up in this entire bit with uh, the wedding sketch and all that stuff, it ultimately does pay off and it ultimately ties together and it really is a lot of fun to watch. Now, um, there are some other sketches as well that do appear at the same time and some moments with Marisa Berenson, but unfortunately, these moments do not shine as well as the wedding sketch, unfortunately. Like, they are a lot of fun, but uh, they're not the best moments, I would say. Uh, going with Marisa Berenson, this is more the kind of episode where the special guest star is just there more so than actually do play a bigger part. Like, this is not necessarily her episode as much as Liberace's episode is about him. Uh, Marisa Berenson is just mostly the kind of guest star that's just, you know, in the background. She's, like, aiding a few things with the Muppets, and that's mostly it. It's the kind where... Like, you could replace her with any other guest star, and it would result in the same kind of episode. And plus the sketches that she has done, they're not necessarily the greatest or the most memorable, but, you know, they do bring out some decent entertainment as well. Um, the, uh, there is the first one where Marisa Beresid would actually dance with a bunch of uh, feather boas, where, like, they, they, like, a lot of, like, a lot of fe like feathery worms, like it it's kind of weird calling them feather boas because like you would mostly associate them with a freaky snake, but I I don't know, like I rather associate them with something like that sounds cuter, like little like little fe like furry worms or something like that. But anyways, um, so 
Um, it, it, like, the first one is mostly like a throwback to many of the dancers that appeared very early on in the first season where they would just dance um, with uh, a bunch of other Muppets in the background. And in this one, Marisa Barrison is mostly dancing with furry worms, and that's mostly the gist of it. And another one that she did appear in, like another sketch, was she was singing a song called You're Always Welcome in Our House. Which I will say that even though, yes, there is no blood or gore or anything like that, and yes, like, the Muppet, like, the ones who are captured in that sketch is, uh, is just a bunch of Muppets, so it does have that kid-friendly appearance, but I, I still gotta say, that sketch is still freaking messed up, like, that song is, it's still messed up, it still has that disturbing feel into it, like, you, like, just change the settings a bit, and this is the kind that, like, this is the kind of thing you would normally see in, in a haunted house or something like that, like, something you would find, uh, during, like, Universal's Halloween Horror Nights, or, so, something along that line, because it, it still has a bit of that disturbing feel to it. It's like, like, throughout that thing I'm watching, it's like, this is just messed up. Like, this is not right. I don't want to go in that house. Screw that. No, Marisa Paris is freaky. I'm out of here. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, even with that, it's like, it is kind of messed up, but... I, I don't know, like, for, I guess, like, it'll definitely be enjoyable for, like, people who really do enjoy that dark humor. Like, it, like, it is effective in that sense, but, I don't know, at least for me, it's kind of, it is still kind of a messed up sketch. Uh, but other than that, uh, the other songs, uh, I will say, they're not as necessarily memorable. They're good, but not great. Uh, the first one, the opening number, is this Russian song where everybody's pretty much speaking in mock Swedish because you don't necessarily hear what the pigs are saying. Like, wah, 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 wah. Uh, what were they ping saying? It's called Red Pigs, uh, Red Red Pigs Dance. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, but then there is another one where, um, like, it, it is a nice one. It is a cute. Um, like toned down like a calming feeling it, it's kind of like uh, when Robin was singing somewhere over the rainbow in the uh, in the Alice Cooper episode it was um, Robin and Rolf they were both together and uh, Robin was singing someone to watch over me so um, I, I got the feeling like now they have an idea of what to do with Robin since he would be considered the cute one uh, he would mostly be prominently featured just singing like those cute little songs and whenever things get a little bit over the top things get too dark or things get too wacky Robin would be the one to come in and he would sing a little song to calm things down you know trying to level things a bit like to give to give us uh, a little breather like a little breather in a sense uh and then there is another one where Kermit and a few other Muppets like, it is, like, what they did is actually, it, like, it is cute, it is enjoyable, but, like I said, it's good but not great, is when they would sing, uh, Do Re Mi from The Sound of Music, but they ended up screwing up miserably. Uh, like, uh, yeah, it's, like, it, it's okay, but, like, I, I, I don't know, I feel like maybe it could have been done better. Uh, but probably the best individual sketch that doesn't have to do with the backstage one, uh, this is also the first time ever that you see the recurring sketch of Muppet Sports, where in this one, the first one that they did was the wig racing, and you got, like, the, the first time ever that we see the, like, the new, like, the sports caster in this, and, uh, just interviewing with other people, talking about wig racing and stuff like that. And I remember, like, this was one of the few sketches that I remember a long time ago as a kid I would watch all the time. And, uh, with, with that said, uh, there is one thing that I always have to say. For some reason, this is, this is, like, a little bit that I'll always remember. And it's kind of weird how, like, as I grew older, like, it kind of changed, like, my perspective on it, it kind of changes. Because there's a little bit where, um, the sportscaster interviews with one of the people who has a wig to race with. And, um... Well, like, the sportcaster would ask, like, don't you use shampoo? And the other guy would say, it's like, I don't use shampoo, I just use real poo. And, like, as I grew older, I start to understand what the joke is. It's like, oh, this is just a little pun. Okay, whatever. But one thing that hasn't changed, like, ever since I saw that, was, was the fact that I always find it kind of weird. It's like, 
Dude, you use real poo on your wig? It's like, do, do you legit, like, poop on your wig or something like that? So, yeah, I always, like, th that's kind of the thing, is that I know what they're trying to do is a really terrible and stupid pun, but the thing is, is that it can't, I can't escape my mind over the fact that they imply that they use, p like, actual crap on their wigs for racing. I, I don't know what it is. Like, that little bit right there just makes that joke unintentionally funny all over again. And I guess that's kind of the big lesson about this is that even though, like, toilet humor is considered very lowbrow, is always one step funnier than puns. In fact, that, that, that's just the thing. Puns are just never funny. Period. I mean, even in The Muppet Show, like, many of the veterinarian's hospital and at the dance show that puns are just not funny period ever but anyways with all that said overall i would have to say with this episode is that even though there are a few elements that are rather mixed like they are decent but not as great as many other moments in the muppet show this still is pretty strong because of the sketch itself now yeah the sketches individually like they can be a little bit of a hit and miss and marisa berenson is not as prominently displayed as some of the previous episodes when they would use their guest star especially uh coming out of the episode of liberace where like he dominated his own episode this one, however, I will say that it, it definitely is worth it. It definitely is enjoyable because of the backstage story about the entire setup of the wedding sketch where we see, we enter into the mindset of Miss Piggy and Kermit, uh, seeing what they are thinking throughout this whole thing. And plus that we are introduced to one of the newer Muppets, Lou Zealand. And overall, it just wraps up together very well. And that is where is, um, that's pretty much where the element of the writing is at its strongest in this episode. This is where it's a lot of fun. It's definitely enjoyable. And, you know, it's just one step of a development to see uh, about Miss Piggy and Kermit's relationship. And always seeing how, like, even though Miss Piggy can always plan out many different ways to ultimately, um, like, be in love with Kermit and to be together as a couple, Kermit is always just one step ahead of her no matter what. So, in that regard, this episode is absolutely worth it. Are there better episodes than this? Yes, there are. But is it still good on its own? Absolutely. It stands out on its... Uh, like, it definitely does stand on its own very well. And I still recommend you guys go check it out. It's definitely a lot of fun. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this episode of the Muffin Vlog. So I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see what else is in store in the next episode. If Miss Piggy will find other ways to bring Kermit into her arms. But until then, see you later dudes.